What's up my common comrades? For those of you who are regulars here on the channel, you may have been wondering why it's been so long since we've talked about the main Batman title. Well, we recently asked ourselves the same question and decided to rectify this problem with the full breakdown of Chip Zdarsky and Jorge Jimenez's failsafe story arc in Batman issues 125 through 130. I'll tell you guys right up front, this creative team is killing it so far with the Batman title. They're really putting Bruce Wayne Batman through the ringer in this opening story arc as he's been getting his butt handed to him throughout, making the failsafe story one of the most compelling and fun Batman stories we've read in a while. But we'll stop the teasing and let you guys see for yourself. Roll the bumper. All right, friends, since we're covering six issues, we're gonna go through them a little bit quicker than normal. The failsafe story kicks off in issue 125 of Batman. On the first page, we see a flashback of Alfred in the Batcave as he hears an alarm go off. He then walks towards it as it fades to black. We then learn in present time that Bruce is having dreams of the three Jokers killing the Bat family. He wakes up and calls Selina, who he recently broke off a marriage with, but he misses her and wants to talk to her. However, he finds out that Valmont, aka Ghostmaker, is over and she clearly just slept with him. Bruce then says, I've gotta go, clearly being upset. Set. As the issue continues, we see someone's murdering wealthy people all around Gotham. We find out that someone is Oswald Cobblepot, aka the Penguin. Penguin literally has a video message saying, I am killing anyone in Gotham who has inherited over $5 million, unless they give that money away to people of the city. Basically, he's trying to get rid of generational wealth and saying you should only be wealthy if you've earned it yourself, which is ironic because the Penguin inherited his family's fortune, but hey, villain. Batman and Tim Drake Robin then go to a gala that the Penguin's gonna crash to try to stop him. They ultimately do, but not without Tim Drake getting shot in the neck by one of the Penguin's thugs, forcing Bruce to drop Drake off at an emergency room, being sure to take him out of his Robin costume before so they don't know he's Robin. After this, Batman goes to visit the Penguin, who is in the hospital dying. You see the Penguin Bruce was fighting at the gala was actually Clayface working for him as the real Penguin is slowly dying in the hospital bed from mercury poisoning. As the two have one final discussion, the Penguin says, yeah, I'm killing all the billionaires, but I left you for last, you know? As he buzzes for the nurse while taking a cyanide pill, killing himself while simultaneously framing Batman for his murder, as the nurses come in. The issue then ends with us seeing the same beat from the first page of the issue, but in present time in the abandoned Batcave under Wayne Manor. As we see a pod come out from the ground saying, online, failsafe online, giving us our first appearance of failsafe. This, my friends, brings us to issue 126. On the first page of the issue, we see Tim Drake Robin has lived, and not only that, is bandaged up and back on the mean streets of Gotham against Batman's wishes. We see Bruce go back to his cave with narration saying, I still don't dream. Not really, not like they do. I'm uneasy. It's not just a Joker nightmare. I couldn't marry Selena. I can't afford that level of distraction. But I look at the rest, at Tim, Barbara. They deserve love and happiness. And I don't think they truly understand that this life won't allow for it. It'll all get taken away at some point. It never ends. Even Cobblepot's death just created a void where lower level thugs get the chance to rise up. More enemies, unending, as we see Batman looking at his monitor with Failsafe creeping up behind him over his left shoulder. Failsafe then attacks, at which point he starts handing Bruce his booty, literally throwing Bruce around like a ragdoll, to the point where he has to use the Batmobile to drag his sorry butt out of there. But Failsafe just follows Bruce into the streets, and the whole time Bruce is just thinking to himself, what is this thing? It isn't human. It's made, which means it could be unmade. But that doesn't matter because Failsafe continues to lay into Bruce, at which point, luckily for Bruce, the Bat family shows up, such as Cassandra Kane, Stephanie Brown, Duke Thomas, Tim Drake, and even good old Dick Grayson. But the combined might of the Bat family cannot put a dent into Failsafe. He's just laying them out left and right. Meanwhile, Tim Drake Robin throws Bruce in the Batmobile to try to get him to Leslie Thompson, to save his life as Bruce has been beaten to near death by Failsafe. But Failsafe is able to tap into their comms and knows what their plan is, so he corners Leslie so she can't meet up with Batman at the cave. Once at the cave, Batman tries to walk by himself, which he's barely able to do, telling Tim, I know what I have to do, and I have to do it alone, as he walks into a cave within his cave, saying to himself, he wouldn't understand, none of them would, the lengths I've gone to, I've softened, surrounded myself with children. But in my early days, God help me, in my early days, I went too far. Failsafe is familiar. But familiar doesn't mean the same thing when you have a mind that remembers everything. It's an abbreviation, a fault line running clean across my memory. There's a ticking deep in my head like a clock, like I've done this to myself, as we see Bruce tap into the Zeranar side of his personality, which is a personality he developed to take over in the event of a psychological attack. With Bruce coming out introducing himself to Robin saying, it's okay boy, it's me, it's the Batman, as he's donned the Zeranar costume. Now that's where issue 126 ends, but before we move on to issue 127, it's time for some stress relief.
That moment of glorious slice and dice therapy is courtesy of legit quality Japanese steel made by today's sponsor, Kamikoto. I'm personally not that much of a chef, but even I know that Japanese steel knives like these are a big deal. They're widely considered the best knives in the world. And Kamikoto was kind enough to send over this awesome combo set of their high-end knives, all made using traditional Japanese techniques. And these are legit the sharpest knives I've ever seen, which is one of the many reasons these knives are used by Michelin star chefs all over the world. Not to mention stressed out YouTube hosts. Each knife is individually inspected and comes with a lifelong guarantee. And as you can see, these Kamikoto Japanese steel knives come in this heavy duty ash wood box, which not only helps to keep them in great condition, but also makes it a great gift, especially with Christmas knocking on our door. Kamikoto has several special offers going on right now. And on top of that, they're offering Variant viewers an extra $50 off any purchase when you use the discount code Variant. Just check out kamikoto.com forward slash Variant. Again, that's kamikoto.com forward slash Variant and use code Variant for a bonus $50 off. Now let's get back to the Batman failsafe story with issue 127. At the beginning of this issue, we get a flashback on the first two pages from the events of JLA Tower of Babel, a storyline in which the Just League discovers that Batman has a contingency plan to take each one of them down if they ever got out of line. Plans that were stolen by Ra's al Ghul almost leading to the League's defeat. Superman is talking to Bruce pissed off saying, take the damn mask off or I'll take it off for you. Bruce then turns around while taking the mask off saying, I made a mistake Clark, but the mistake wasn't keeping the files. The League of Controlled could decimate the planet. My mistake was in not keeping them secure enough. Clark then just looks at Bruce saying, amazing. So let me ask you this. What's your contingency plan for yourself? What's the plan to take down Batman? Bruce responds, it's you, Clark. It's the Justice League. Clark then tells him, really? And how does the League take down the man who has planned for us? Tell me the truth, damn it. In a world where you know every move, who's to stop the Batman? Basically telling us that Superman himself knows they can't stop Batman if need be. Because in a world where Batman knows you exist, he knows every move and is already 10 steps ahead of you. It's just crazy that Superman is straight up like, how are we supposed to beat you when you know every move? After this, we are brought back to present where Tim Drake is getting acquainted with the Zerinar version of Batman, where he tells Tim, your Batman has called on me to save everyone. I'm better than Bruce. He created me within our mind, a backup version of Batman stripped free of Bruce Wayne. I'm our protection against psychological attacks. He thought, rightfully, that I created failsafe because he can never create the thing to stop Batman if he ever went too far. Tim asks, you know how to stop it? Batman responds, unfortunately, I erased that from my memory, knowing your Batman would call on me. So essentially, after that conversation Bruce had with Clark during the Tower of Babel story, Bruce knew that the only person that could take him down if he got out of line was himself. So he created an AI robot version of himself that was made to take him down if he ever went rogue. And once the news started reporting that Batman killed the Penguin, which obviously isn't true, Failsafe was activated to stop Batman. After this, Failsafe eventually makes his way back to the Batcave, where him and Zerinar start fighting. Tim Drake tries to help Batman, but it's to no avail. When Zerinar says that Robin and the Bat family are not family, but soldiers in his army, the normal Bruce side of his consciousness activates again saying, I let you out because I thought you could deactivate failsafe. Zerinar responds, I created him. I can stop him. But Bruce just says, he knows your tricks. He's trying to stop the Batman you know, the pure Batman you are. But I am Batman and Bruce Wayne. And Tim isn't my soldier. He's my son, as the Bruce consciousness takes over again. But it doesn't matter because after this, failsafe continues to decimate Batman, like putting him inches away from death's door. Literally, he's laying on the ground, not able to move. But luckily, Nightwing had Oracle call in reinforcements with Batman laying on the floor not able to move saying to himself I hear him when he means it his voice is a boom as we see a silhouette say I'm going to need you to back away from my friend with Bruce saying to himself a midwestern boom that tells even the cynics everything will be all right failsafe then looks at the silhouette saying I urge you to fly away but on the last page of the comic we see it's Superman in all of his glory with Bruce saying Superman is here this brings us to issue 128 of Batman where at the beginning of the issue we see Superman square off against failsafe as he ignites kryptonite blades at this point Superman is forced to fly away and use long-range attack like his heat vision to try to bring failsafe down. All while Batman is on the floor, not able to move. Bruce says to himself, it's a feint to push Clark away. I'm in hell. I know the moves. I see what's coming and I can't stop it. I can't save my friend. As we see, failsafe has tricked Superman into coming after him so he could surprise attack him with a kryptonite sword from his back. That's right, failsafe one shot Superman. At this point, Green Arrow arrives trying to use a trick arrow on failsafe, but that doesn't work. Then another Justice League powerhouse arrives, Mother Freaking Martian Manhunter, who punches Failsafe out of Wayne Manor. At this point, Hawkgirl and Black Canary also arrive, with Superman laying there dying as he has a kryptonite blade in his abdomen. Batman is able to muster up enough strength to remove the shard from his friend and bandage him up, but he says, this will only stop the bleeding. He's infected with it now, dead in hours if not treated. With Failsafe currently distracted by Martian Manhunter, Hawkgirl, and Black Canary, Green Arrow and Tim get Superman 
Superman and Batman to the Javelin. Arrow then tells Tim the plane basically flies itself, as Tim is put in charge to get Superman and Batman medical attention ASAP, so they don't die. Meanwhile, Failsafe is soloing Martian Manhunter, Hawkgirl, Black Canary, and Green Arrow. It's just crazy how powerful Failsafe is. Anyway, this fight eventually ends up in Gotham with Failsafe still doing his thing, beating the ever-living crap out of the Justice League and the Bat Family, while Bruce gets enough strength to stand up and tell Tim, get Clark to the Fortress of Solitude. Everything you need to make him whole will be there. You're Robin. You will save him. I am proud of you, Tim, of the man you've become. Do not worry about me. I'll survive this. As he jumps out of the jet, falling into the sea, activating a device that allows Aquaman to find and bring him to Atlantis to help him recover in a specialized tank. However, when Bruce finally wakes up from recovering, Aquaman informs him that he's been out for two weeks and Failsafe now has full control over Gotham. Not only that, he's still looking for Bruce. As Aquaman says, Bruce, he wants you to know, he wants the world to know, Gotham is his, and you need to come and get it. And this brings us to issue 129. In issue 129, we see narrations from Batman say, I feel it from across the world from deep in the seas. Gotham screams. Failsafe has locked the city down. No one in, no one out. He's destroyed my family. He's laid waste to anyone who could help. He's created my nightmare scenario. A Gotham where around every corner is a Joe Chill. Every alley is crime alley. I know he's not programmed to kill, that much was obvious from how he took out everyone in our initial fights. But he spread gasoline throughout Gotham and turned a blind eye to the fires. My city is burning and I am underwater. As we're brought back to Batman watching the news of Gotham in Atlantis. Aquaman says, this is bad. Other leaguers have tried to get to him, but he set traps all around and throughout the city, taking each one out as they go in. People are getting hurt, Bruce, so I've got to ask, what is this thing? Bruce thinks to himself, it's youthful arrogance, it's paranoia. He then says to Aquaman, it's my fault, Arthur. My subconscious created failsafe to stop me if I ever went too far, if Batman ever willingly took a life. He knows my plans, he knows my moves. He's faster and stronger than I am, all by design. He lay dormant, his program scanning news and chatter for signs of my going too far. I didn't know it, but Alfred was in charge of resetting his activation in case of false alarms. But Alfred is gone, so there was no one to stop it. Explaining what the first page of Batman issue 125 was with Alfred hearing a beep in the Batcave. Aquaman then says, and now you're killing Gotham. And this thing knows your moves, knows you'll come here. You've endangered Atlantis, Bruce. Batman thinks to himself, there's nothing I could say. He's right. Giving up would stop all of this. Dying would stop this. Meanwhile, we see Failsafe has taken over Oracle's mind, using her as a human computer, while simultaneously running scans of all the ways Batman will try to beat him, saying time travel to unmake Failsafe. Too dangerous to the timeline. Flee Earth to draw away? Perhaps enlist alien entities. Activate unfinished Omega armor? Zero options involved to save you, as he says this to the Bat family held prisoner by Failsafe. Long story short, Aquaman sets out to distract Failsafe, who obviously ultimately comes to Atlantis to find Batman, but ends up becoming a hostage. Failsafe then demands to the Atlanteans to tell him where Batman is, or he'll kill Aquaman, so of course they do. But to their surprise, he's gone already. That's right, Batman has made his way to the Watchtower. But this is Failsafe we're talking about here, an AI robot version of Batman who also makes his way to the Watchtower in space. Once Failsafe arrives, Batman grabs a gun from the Justice League Armory, a gun from New Genesis, and he shoots Failsafe with it, but it only goes through the outer casing of Failsafe's armor. The battle continues, but ultimately ends with Batman teleporting Failsafe back to the Hall of Justice on Earth as the Watchtower explodes with Batman floating alone in space with no Justice League Javelin jets to save him. He literally says, damn it. Failsafe destroyed any means of escape for me. No ships, no teleporters, just cold death as Batman is floating in space alone with limited oxygen as the issue ends. And this brings us to the sixth and final issue of the Failsafe story arc with issue 130. The issue opens up with Batman continuing to float through space with his oxygen levels at 4%. But he uses compressed gas that feeds his grappling gun to give him some propulsion towards a damaged javelin. But even though the javelin can't fly, Batman is able to take the ship's oxygen supply, which should give him 12 hours of normal breathing. So he straps it to his leg and then removes one of the boosters from the ship to boost himself in increments from the moon back to Earth. After 12 hours, he makes it to Earth's atmosphere and then re-enters Earth's atmosphere like a damn space shuttle. Literally, he's on fire and everything, but luckily for Bruce, he says, my suit can take the heat. But the oxygen mask? Can't, as he rips off his trunks and wraps it around his face. Once back in Earth's atmosphere, he opens his cape up, gliding back down to Earth like a fiery bat landing on his feet. That's right, Batman just fell from the moon back to Earth with nothing but some oxygen and his normal bat suit, and then just stood up like, let's get to work. He then makes his way back to the Fortress of Solitude, where Tim Drake is watching Clark recover. Bruce walks in and says, Tim, Clark, I need access to your workshop, with Robin saying, whoa, whoa, I thought you wanted me to keep Superman away from you, and what happened to you? Bruce just looks at him saying, I fell from the moon. Tim just looks at him shocked, but Bruce just looks over at Clark saying, you're good? He replies, not 100%, but getting there. Batman replies, good. 
I'll need you to buy me some time while I end this once and for all. As he watches Failsafe approach the Fortress of Solitude. Superman then suits up in one of his armors that he has at the fortress since he's not fully healed yet and says, Failsafe, I wasn't prepared for you last time, but I am now. Stoops is able to get a few punches in, but Failsafe releases his circuitry from his arm saying, I know everything about you, Superman, even things you don't know. Kryptonians like humans have pressure points as he uses his wiring to infiltrate Superman's helmet, touching pressure points on Superman, which involuntarily sets off his heat vision, causing it to reflect back to him because he's wearing a helmet. That's right, Failsafe just soloed Superman a second time in a row. Failsafe is by far one of the baddest characters to ever set foot in DC. Meanwhile, back in the Fortress of Solitude, Bruce tells Tim his plan. He says to Tim, in the Watchtower, I managed to hit Failsafe with the new Genesis Element X laser, creating a small hole in his upper back. So now I can access his programming through the breach with the nanobots. The problem is that a normal virus won't stop him. His programming will reject anything seen as hostile. The most we can hope for is to subtly shift his traits, introduce a personality extension that won't be immediately attacked by his original program. Bruce then says, this thing is designed to defeat Batman, but it doesn't stand a chance against Batman and Robin. As the two put on their masks and charge failsafe with Bruce saying, old moves, come back. Dick always went off book. Jason hated practicing them, but Tim, he loved it, the teamwork. We had each other's backs, but this is different. We're not teaming up against ex-cons in question mark shirts or mindless brutality of a killer croc. We're up against myself without restraint or weakness. Well, let's see if we could change that as Batman puts his virus into the hole he made in failsafe earlier. But let's pause for a second. Bruce literally said, referring to failsafe, were up against myself without restraints or weakness. Meaning, Failsafe is essentially the most perfect form of Batman. A Batman that has no weakness and prep time built in. Which quite possibly makes Failsafe one of the most deadly characters to ever set foot in DC. I mean, he's literally soloed the entire Justice League and several other heroes that came after him, and he beat Superman two times in a row. And easily, might I add. Anyway, once the virus is implanted into Failsafe, he asks, what did... Bruce then says, a small thing, an additional bit of programming, compassion. It's what separated us. I may be a dark knight, I may be vengeance, but I still care. And now, so do you. Bruce and Tim then wait to see if the programming takes, but after a few seconds, Failsafe just pulls out a gun, points it at Batman, saying, eliminate Batman. As Bruce says, it didn't work. Tim then screams, trying to convince a robot to appeal to the new programming. But it's too late. Batman says, like everyone who's ever lived, he survived everything until he did it. Bruce then looks at Tim saying, it's okay, as Failsafe shoots Batman, vaporizing him, leaving nothing left. Tim screams no as he falls to his knees saying, you were supposed to have compassion. Failsafe answers while destroying his gun. Tim Drake, that was compassion. Batman eliminated, end program as he flies away. However, on the last page of the comic, we see Bruce wasn't killed or disintegrated. His body was actually teleported somewhere, which looks to me like Crime Alley, but we'll just have to wait and see in coming issues. But there you have it, guys, the entire fail safe storyline. As I mentioned in the open, this was a fantastic kickoff story for the new creative team. And while issue 130 technically wraps up the arc, we've clearly got more fail safe coming because Batman has just been teleported somewhere, all broken and bloody after fail safe flew off. So this is not the end of it. Not to mention, Batman fans have loved the failsafe character and plot because again he is just a compassionless batman mercilessly carrying out his programming so essentially a bloodlusted batman with prep time and as a result he doesn't have a single l on his record literally no one was able to stop him in the end and he completed his objective of killing Batman. Or at least, he was tricked into believing he did. But in any case, we absolutely love this story and can't wait to see where Chip Zdarsky and Jorge Amenes take things from here. And now it's your turn. Let us know what you think of this story down in the comments. First up for the week of December 7th, we have Daredevil issue six. This series is taking Daredevil to all new levels. He's got a new badass look, he's married to Elektra, and is now the leader of the Fist. Oh, and did I mention that his powers are also getting upgraded? You need to read this series if you haven't already. Here we have Thor issue 29. In this issue, Thor's baby sister is kidnapped so deep beyond hell that not even Sif's all sight can see her. Who will the God of Thunder call upon for help? Third on the list, we have Gargoyles issue one. This is an all new series by creator Greg Wiseman that picks up on the amazing 90s animated series and continues the story of Goliath, Bronx, Hudson, and the rest of the Gargoyles. You can count on us talking more about this series in the new year. Next, we have Dark Web Issue 1. This is it, guys, the start of Marvel's next big crossover event that puts Ben Riley and Madeline Pryor at the center. And finally, we have Batman 130. This is the finale to the epic failsafe story that we just talked about today. So if you haven't read it, definitely check it out for yourself. And that's gonna bring today's episode to a close, but if you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out this one right here. And if you like all of our content, like, subscribe, and comment, it helps the channel grow. But other than that, I'll see you guys next time when I talk about all things comics.